Hey guys, what's up? It's JDogs here, and we are back for another episode of Attack of the B Team here on the Spiritcraft B Team server. And uh, I've got quite a few different things I want to show you guys. So, first things first, you're going to notice we've got some weird food going on here. We've got some chocolate waffles. Um, that's mainly because I did make this to make my bro brother's uh, birthday cake, but I, I haven't gotten into this. But we did get a little gift from Wish. She's been doing some of the food stuff and she made us up some food because uh, yeah I've constantly been eating like you know just the same thing over and over again apples and stuff so she figured she'd bring me some stuff over and so I made some shelves to put up put it up on and I've just been popping it off there as I need it. Also I've got like spare buckets and my spare saw down there so it's not over here. Um, change this over temporarily to uh, Soul Stand so I could work on getting these guys ghostwood saplings that for the ghostwood you can tell we've got a nice stock of it up already and uh, that was just recently emptied and we put actually even put some in there so I may run it through again just to get a bunch of wood for down below uh, to run the tree farm because it tends to actually go pretty quickly and it gives saplings that you can actually melt down you'll notice the XP thing is no longer here and we're going to take a look at why that's no longer there. We also got a little trophy, but it wasn't from actually killing, you know, legitimately with the sword like this. Um, it was from getting the XP farm going and stuff down below. So first things first, I want to go up here. We can go into little fail goal mode. And we're going to go around this way. And I want to show you guys what I did with the blaze spawners. So they are in here, surrounded by lava, because it's the only way to turn them off. And uh, for the longest time, they were really giving me a, a hard time as to why they wouldn't quit spawning. And yeah, I remembered you have to turn them off with lava like this. Um, they won't be having this type of way to turn it off unless I can think of something else uh, once they get moved. And so what I want to show you is that part. Well, hello there. Ow, that hurt. Why you gonna hit me? Okay. Um, no, we don't need brains. We got brains. Okay. So, anyways, we are going to go downstairs. We're going to take a look at this. And this is what I've been hard at work on uh, getting energy set up for a massive power source. Now, mind you, it's not f fully set up yet, and I've still been working on some stuff, but I want to explain what we've got going on here and why. So first things first, power switch and all that, as you guys saw last time, I did have to change out the ceiling here. Uh, it couldn't be that glass because, well, basically because you can't put uh, these rail things on it. And I'll show you here in a second when we get in here. I believe it's right here. Yep. Okay. So as you can see, I had to change this up a little bit. I actually have the streams running uh, clockwise. Well, no, that's counterclockwise right yeah counterclockwise um, into these conveyor belts which I just dyed the same color and the reason I had to do this is because um, when I had the slime channels just by themselves it was getting clogged very very easily um, they were getting stuck and, and all kinds of different things so uh, I had to change that up to make it go in there easier also I have some witch spawners now I put them in here I've got three zombies uh, two witch and two skeletons and then the blazes are going to go on these opposing corners uh, and they'll fall down naturally too and get pushed in with the rest of them more than likely now this room is a little bigger I think than it really needs to be quite a bit bigger actually so I may actually move these down a few notches or something um, I know I only really need two blocks of space and I put these stone covers above them so nothing can spawn and like I said, I, I know I really only need like two blocks of space um, above it, and so that keeps anything from getting on top of it. If I move it down, then we're going to have a problem of stuff spawning on, to on top of it. So I may just leave it there, and the blazes will work their way down slowly. So for what we have down below, let's get out of here. Let's go down below, and I'm going to show you guys what I've set up. Now, it's very similar to... Um, well, almost identical to, except for a few changes I made, to uh, a system Generic B has put together uh, on his Attack of the B team. I, I've seen that it worked very well, and so I decided to use 
a good chunk of it, um, the way he had it set up. So first things first, I wanted a spot where I could still go and stand and put XP down, so that's right here. Um, I've got a huge tank that I brought from upstairs of XP, and I've actually already siphoned some of it through here. This is a, a splitter where part of it will go this direction and go through this fluid duct and become XP, and the other part of it will actually go over here, go through a little um, shower right here, and rain down on this sewer, whoops, glitchy ceiling, rain down on this sewer, which will then turn it into mob essence, and uh, mob essence can be used also for power in, in different ways. So that's why we're doing some of this too. Uh, now where are we getting the XP originally? Well, that's where this setup comes in. So when the mobs drop down, the first thing that happens is this autonomous activator triggers, and normally I have my cleaver in there. I'm probably going to make another sword, but the cleaver works really good for right now because it has looting three on it and all kinds of different things. So we'll put that in there for a minute and we'll test it here in a second. Um, so first things first, it comes down. It gets killed by this. We have a vacuum hopper is what this little black thing right here is called. I don't know if you guys can see it right there. And so if we were to right click on that, you can see that the items will go into here. The XP will go into here because um, it will actually suck up the XP too. And by doing the autonomous activator, um, it actually acts as, acts as if um, someone is actually killing it because you can, you know, make it act like a person. I have it aiming low because um, when I did it level, it wasn't working quite right. And also by having to aim low, it does the bottom block so it gets baby zombies too. Um, but as you can see, I set this one up so that the XP is output. Well, how do we rotate? There we go. I always forget how to rotate. So the XP is output this way, which is the green. And then the item is output on the bottom, which you can set here. And so you can see that there's where that flows out through there. So that's where the XP comes from. It goes right through this little duct right here and gets fed into this and is split equally on both sides. And so now we can have a nice little XP section here. And I'm probably going to set up liquid XP, XP eventually um, so that this is a lot more useful to us since it's going to be liquidized. And of course the mob essence will be used for energy later on down the road. Now. Um, as far as items, because the, the vacu vacuum hopper also sucks up the items. Well, it's going to go into this item router that I have set up right down below it. And you can see here, now I put in clear glass here, and I'm going to explain that here in a minute. Um, right now I have redstone and glowstone going to this side, to this chest. And I have blaze rods going to a chest on the other side over there. Okay. I wanted to get everything here, and as you can see, there's nothing there right now because it's all being filtered through. But I wanted to set up a, the system right, and I couldn't figure out why things were going into these chests if they were not mapped into there, and they were kind of disappearing and, and just going to weird places. So I actually, uh, in generics, he had a nullifier directly below uh, the item router where you know items he didn't want would go straight into it. Well, I wanted to have somewhere where I could route off this, um, all the other miscellaneous items. And so the way I have it set up, and it usually works, <laughs> I'm not going to say all the time, because occasionally I'll find like a bow in this chest or, um, you know, in the other chest over there. But for the most part, this works. And this is, uh, I have it filtering out things through here. I have a servo in there. And then... I have nothing selected here and I have it t saying to reject on map no which means even if it's not mapped it'll come through here and it'll try to find somewhere for it to go it was starting to send stuff through the yellow and the red and so I said only send clear glass there which of course is never going to come through the system so by default it should send it through this black path okay once it gets sent through the black path I have this one set up first because I don't want the little witch's hands I'd not even into witchery and I don't think they're really used for anything else and so right now that's the only thing being sent into the nullifier um, and then right next to it uh, you can see I've got this set up to where it says stack size one and it gets the rotten flesh 
So we have a deep storage unit that's getting tons of rotten flesh. And eventually that's what I'm going to set up everything as. I'm going to have separate deep storage units for each and every item that comes out um, that is not being used in the system. And I'll explain that the rest of that here in a second. Um, but eventually there'll be deep storage units here and then it, it can all get hooked up to um, the main storage system. That way I can just be able to request it from down here. Uh, and then everything else all are, automatically goes into here so like we're gonna have an arrow deep storage unit a bone deep storage unit which I'm gonna probably work on between now and then the next episode so to explain all the rest of this mess in the back here let's eat a waffle okay so why am I rerouting redstone and glowstone and everything else well first of all the redstone and glowstone goes to this side and it gets sent through and it goes into this magma crucible which melts it down and it sends it off and through this fluiduct and I have this side saying okay give me only energized glowstone which I got that by using a bucket uh, I filled a bucket with energized glowstone and then said whitelist only energized glowstone and so it'll fill this tank over here with energized and of course I did the same thing with the redstone for destabilized redstone it melts it down sends it over and I have this one saying okay only whitelist the destabilized redstone um, now why are we doing that I'll explain that again here in a second uh, it, it kinda all ties in at the end and so hopefully I'm not completely confusing you guys uh, if I do you know you can always go back and, and you know watch the video over or even um, go and watch generics video it's it's a very worthwhile setup it does take a little while but it's very worth it um, so through here we're gonna have blaze rods coming out this side and once I get the blazes up there like I said I'm not gonna be able to turn them off I I don't know of a way without using lava that I can turn it off so they're just gonna run all the time but the other spawners will only run um, when I have this the switch over here turned on to tell it to turn the lights out so we're having blaze rods come through here and they're sent into this and when it gets here I have this cyclic assembler now the only reason I know what this is is because I was kinda just going through his thing but basically you're able to do a blueprint um, to say what you want to come in here and what you want it to make once it's done so basically you make a blueprint which is like two paper and a piece of lapis um, and you put it right up here and it doesn't say blaze rod to start with but if you put a blaze rod here it'll show blaze powder over here and then you just hit this little check mark and then it'll turn that into this which it says schematic 2x blaze powder from 1x blaze rod so every time a blaze rod comes into this section again through this little system it'll automatically turn it into blaze powder and then I have it sending it from the configuration I have it sending it straight down into this deep storage unit where all the blaze powder is going to get stored the reason we need blaze powder is so that we can power the entire system uh, it's being powered off of the energized glowstone the destabilized redstone and blaze powder uh, all together so you can see in this one right here we have a reactant dynamo and the redstone feeds into here along with blaze powder when you combine the two it gives off energy if you go over to this side we have the energized glowstone and again blaze powder when you combine the two it gives off energy and to power this part of the system I just have a hardened energy cell you can use a leadstone one too but I used a hardened one so it has more uh, capacity uh, to hold first and so it just powers these two items up through here and then around the other side I'll show you the rest of the setup so on this side I have three item ducks uh, this is set to round robin so it takes the blaze rods back and forth uh, evenly between the two dynamos now this is actually a redstone energy conduit and then a redstone energy cell the highest one that you can get as far as I know um, basically what it's doing is as these tubes send out power 
it sends it this direction and that direction to power both of these cells. So not only is it powering its own system, but this is going to be the main source of power. And as you can see, it holds, what is that, one, no, 10 million RF, I think, if I'm reading that right. Um, and you can right-click it and, and set the RF per tick. Well, no, actually you can't. Can you? That's weird. Okay. I thought you could set this. You can take it down. Okay, so you can decrease it, but you can't increase it by uh, past 2,000. So um, if you look at these over here, you could increase these and decrease these to where they're uh, lower and higher. And so normally you would have these set pretty low, uh, but I just have them maxed out on both of them. So that is how the system is being powered um, by the three different things. And like I said, let's get flying back up here. Come on. Why can't I fly? Am I turned into? Yeah. Okay. Fly. There we go. Okay. Make me hit my space bar like crazy. Um, but anyways... This is all getting sorted out to where, you know, we're getting equal amounts. And then, like I said, once I get the blazes in here, it'll constantly kill them, which will make blaze powder constantly. And more than likely, I'll just leave this running for a while. And the only thing that we're going to have to expand is these tanks, because probably for a little bit, I'll just turn the shower off on this side and, and take it off to where the XP side can fill up. Um, but eventually they're both going to get full and so I don't want it going to waste. So I may even insert some kind of system here that automatically enchants books or, um, you know, something to where we're not having, uh, XP going to waste. Uh, I had to put this little cover over this side because sometimes when this rained down into the sewer, um, it would let XP get out and it'd be just kind of floating around here and I didn't like that so I just put this cover over it for now I'm probably gonna make this look a lot nicer eventually but I just wanted to show you guys what I've got going on and this is all in works to to where we can start making things to be able to go to space because that's that's my big goal here I really do want to go to space I want to go to the moon I want to go to Mars and I want to be able to do my own little outer space station um, and all that because I think that's the really cool part of this. I also want to get into a lot of other smaller things and of course I want to get into witchery which is a huge thing. Um, as I said once before I probably won't do a lot of that on camera but I will try to keep you guys uh, up to date as to what I'm doing and everything. So if you have any suggestions that's probably going to be it for the video. I just wanted to go over all of this that I've done and, and, and how I've got it set up. If you guys have any suggestions or questions, uh, comments, criticism, anything like that, be sure to leave it in the section down below. I really do enjoy hearing from you guys, and I hope you are enjoying this series. I'm enjoying playing this game uh, and playing this mod pack. It's really fun for me, and, and I like how it's coming together as far as learning some of the power sources because, you know, even though I watched a video to be able to set this up, at the same time, I learned a lot while I was doing this on how to reroute things. Like, for example, for for a good share of things, we're now going to probably use thermal expansion for our sorting system, um, except for the smaller part where you actually request things. Because, in my opinion, this looks like it's going to work out a lot better for us um, to where we can have a nice... A really nice storage system and it's not gonna be really confusing so that's gonna be one of the changes we will probably make but as I said I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did be sure to leave a like it lets me know that you guys enjoyed it and that you know it helps me out a little bit and of course if you're not subscribed be sure to subscribe and I will see you guys next time take it easy peace out